Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States military builds impressive aircraft, and sometimes getting them off the ground and landing them requires very creative solutions. For instance, balancing the CH-47 Chinook on only its rear wheels is one such solution, enabling the gigantic helicopter to touch down and take off in hazardous terrain. This precarious maneuver is called the pinnacle landing and allows the rear ramp to open while the front of the aircraft hovers in the air. A skilled pilot only needs an area of 12 feet in width to perform a pinnacle. The most enjoyable uh, flight portion of flying the Chinook is doing a two-wheel pinnacle, uh, where we'll land on top of a mountaintop and only put the ramp, uh, basically, in the two wheels on the ground and have troops run off the back as my front of my helicopter is hanging off a cliffside. This provides access to the Chinook's 52-foot fuselage for cargo and passengers. From the edge of a cliff, rooftop, or other dangerous situations most aircraft cannot access, making the Chinook perfect for combat and rescue missions. The Chinook's capabilities aren't limited to land. From its conception, the CH-47's fuselage was designed to be watertight, facilitating safe flight in close proximity to lakes, rivers, and oceans. Remarkably, it can even land in and take off from the surface of a body of water. With the rear door open, the cargo hold of the Chinook partially fills with water, permitting watercraft to drive directly into the back for safe extraction. The Chinook is named after the native Chinook people of North America. Development began in 1958, and the Chinook took its inaugural flight in 1961. Its tandem rotors spin in opposing directions, ensuring stability and eliminating the need for a tail rotor. These rotors are powered by dual Honeywell T55 engines that provide 5,000 shaft horsepower. That's enough power to reach a maximum speed of 195 miles per hour. The Chinook serves a range of purposes, from combat to field resupply. Its immense power, internal cargo winch, and 30-foot-long cargo department allow it to carry up to 55 troops and a variety of underslung freight. There are roller systems that are integrated throughout the cabin floor uh, and on the ramp that helps us with ease of cargo loading. Uh, this way we don't have to strain and set up uh, different roller systems throughout the helicopter. It's just already here and it's just a quick, easy flip and roll over and play and just go to work. However, not all aircraft enjoy the Chinook's ability to land nearly anywhere. Landing a jet on an aircraft carrier is one of the most difficult feats any pilot will ever attempt. In fact, this maneuver is often described as a controlled crash by pilots and can be more dangerous than combat. Aircraft travel around 150 miles per hour when approaching the carrier deck for landing. Within two seconds, a 24,000-pound jet must be halted atop a mere 300-foot runway. To accomplish this, pilots must snag one of four arresting wires with a tail hook fixed beneath the jet.
landing isn't the only difficulty presented by keeping aircraft at sea. For an F-18 to gain enough speed to lift off from a carrier's 300-foot deck, it needs assistance. This extra power is provided by the Catabar system, the Catapult Assisted Takeoff but Arrested Recovery. Most of the Catabar exists beneath the aircraft carrier's deck. However, the exposed moving part of the catapult is above the carrier's deck. This is where the front wheel of the F-18 is attached, launching the jet up to 150 miles per hour in two seconds. This enables it to take off with its full payload weighing of 66,000 pounds. On the other hand, the F-35B's Stovall, or short takeoff vertical landing capability, bypasses the need for catapults altogether. With 40,000 pounds of vertical thrust, the F-35 Stovall can even take off vertically if it does not have a full payload. The same power that allows the Stovall to ascend allows it to make vertical landings onto a carrier's deck, much like a helicopter. The Stovall's agility is matched by its power. On June 14, 2010, the F-35B was the first Stovall aircraft to break the sound barrier. There are times when an aircraft's strengths become its weakness. One such situation is when a float plane is landlocked but needs to achieve liftoff. Float planes such as the Cessna 150 are equipped with two large pontoons rather than traditional landing gear because they are meant to take off and land on water. Due to its lightweight design, a Cessna 150 only needs to travel at 62 miles per hour to become airborne. By loading a float plane on a trailer and pulling it up to speed, it can take off from a concrete runway and relocate to a new home on the water. Despite the fact that float planes are designed for water, taking off and landing still requires attention and skill. Even glass-like conditions can be dangerous because they reduce the pilot's sense of depth perception when approaching the water's surface. To land in rough water, pilots descend slowly, increasing power after connecting the water's surface to keep the nose of the aircraft slightly in the air. Landing a float plane in choppy conditions places extreme stress on the aircraft and must be done with care. Pilots search for water that is protected by cove or harbor to reduce wind speeds. When airborne, float planes travel much slower than traditional aircraft due to the drag created by their pontoons and associated hardware. This hardware adds vertical surfaces to the front of float planes, reducing their directional stability. Given these factors, pilots must maintain shallow bank angles and avoid sudden shifts in direction to avoid skidding, which is when the tail of the aircraft is not following the path of the nose. All things considered, the float plane's ability to take off and land anywhere with a large enough body of water makes it uniquely versatile. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.